Um, all right, everyone. I think we can get started. Welcome to Strip Club. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today I have a new favorite. I love this quilt. I especially love the name of the pattern. Did you see it? It's called Leaf It To Me. <laughs> and it is Leaf It To Me, not Leaf It To Me. It's Leaf It To Me. So here is the quilt. Da -da -da. Do you like it? Um, it is a, a beautiful collection of fabrics, a simple pattern, and I think the magic of the whole quilt is the pieced border. You want to see how it comes together? Now, I almost didn't do this quilt, I have to be honest, because we've been a little strip club heavy the last few months. Uh, the little strip tube. Wait, this is the strip tube. This is a strip tube ruler. This is, we have another strip tube ruler. But come on, right? I mean, it's a beautiful fall quilt and almost fall time here in San Diego. Yeah, there's, there's laughing in the audience because uh, it is October 10th and it was 103 degrees yesterday here in town. 103 in October. So we're pretending. We cranked up the air conditioning. We put on our best fall clothes. I saw a car go down the freeway. I swear it had a Christmas tree on top of it. I got so excited. <laughs> but then I remembered it's San Diego and I zoomed around it and it's a palm tree. So. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. So we'll still celebrate fall in fabric. Um, it does use two and a half inch strips. I know that's a shocker. Two and a half inch strips and uh, uses a strip tube ruler. Now this particular quilt uses 47 strips. Now most bundles are 40 strips and I try very hard to create patterns that let you make a, a decent sized quilt within the 40 strips from the bundle. Because we're using the strips in the border, I broke my own rule for this one. Am I forgiven? Am I? Thank you. I am forgiven. Thank you. Um, so this will take 47 strips. It means that if you buy a bundle of 40, you're going to have to get some additional strips or you could buy two bundles and then use the rest for another project. These particular fabrics I think are gorgeous, so <laughs> I don't see a problem. Um, for this month we do have some kits and what we have done is um, provided 60 strips in, a, um, in the kit so that it, at least you don't have to have 80 strips. When you, when you have a strip pack like this, and this are, these are the strips that we have used in this um, collection, there are two, two and a half inch strips of each color in the bundle, so there's 20 different fabrics. So in our kit, actually, it's going to be a pack like this and then another set of 20 strips. So that's 60 strips, is that what I said? Okay. So that you'll have another stack like that that's just 20 strips to help make this quilt. There are multiple sizes in the quilt because that's what we do. Not for all patterns, but definitely for strip club because I know you guys want to either make it bigger or you want to make it smaller. And it's easier for me to do it in the pattern than it is to do it at the cutting station. So we have one, two, three, four, five different uh, sizes in this pattern called Leaf It To Me. We have a wall hanging, we have a bed runner, that's new for us. A throw, a twin, and a queen. If you want to make your own size, I have a little tip for you. You want odd numbers. Odd number blocks. You always want to have one, three, or five across, which is why we're confined to the sizes that we have. There's not a, a, a lap th a size or a little larger. You want to see how it comes together? Okay, so go collect your two and a half inch strips, and by that I mean go grab them from the counter and then buy them at the register and then go buy them. And then you're going to sew two of them together. Here I have two two and a half inch strips sewn together. And um, make a bunch of sets. The pattern will tell you how many to make. Now we're going to make it into a tube because we love the strip tube technique. By doing, to do that, we'll put a two and a half inch background strip right sides together with this which by the magic of television I already have. Right sides together, so quarter inch seam up along the top and a quarter inch seam down the bottom to make a tube. If you know us, you know how this works. I joked earlier that we could do this um, as a silent movie and I would just put things up there and you guys would know what to do. But just in case you're new to this, this is the strip tube ruler. This is actually strip tube junior. 
If you don't have Junior yet, get him. He's so cute and helpful. He's perfect for these type cuts. He goes up to six and a half inches. Um, you don't need it that big for this. The other ruler, the original one, goes to nine and a half inches. And if you've ever used a large square up ruler for a small block to square up, you'll see having a lot of ruler to contend with makes it a little harder. That's the reason we have Junior, because he's smaller and easier for the smaller cuts. So you'll put the measurement on the bottom stitching line and cut up one side and down the other side to cut out a triangle. Are you ready? The triangle looks a little bit like this. So once you cut that triangle away from your tube, remove it from your tube and open it up and you get your diagonally pieced square. Brilliant. Yeah, that's all right. Good job. Um, so here we have background on one side, two strips on the other side. Do you see that? So um, the pattern will tell you to cut off the dog ears. The dog ears are little triangles that flop from the outside here, or the rabbit ears. Dog ears or rabbit ears? Dog ears? Rabbit ears? Dog ears? Dog ears. Wolf ears. <laughs> Here's a little tip if you want to cut off those dog ears. <laughs> we put that same triangle back on, onto our cutting board, and then upside down now. So a different direction. Same measurement on the stitching line. And you'll get the right angle to cut and cut on both sides and cut off your dog ears. Brilliant. Did you know that? That is brilliant. I, uh, one of you guys taught me that. I learn stuff every day. So there's one. Next time you cut, you'll cut off of the top stitching line, and then the bottom, and then the top. The angles are the same for each of these cuts, but make fresh cuts so that each block is accurate. So you're not basing the second block off of a line of something you cut for the first block. Do you want the $10 tip again? Thank you. So this cut is not too difficult because of the angles. But then when you flip the ruler around and you go to cut to the right side, um, no problem. But if you go to cut to the left side, it's an odd angle to put your ruler up against, your rotary cutter up against the ruler in that angle. But we need to cut off of that stitching line. So the easiest thing to do is simply flip your strip set. So what was the top stitching line is now the bottom. And just keep flipping your strip set. So the pattern will tell you, because graphically, you can see what I'm talking about, to flip your ruler. But you have just learned that you can flip your strip set as you work down the tube. So work down the tube, cut out a bunch of squares that look like this. Now you're going to do the same thing. The only difference is we're going to create a tube that starts with, once again, two and a half inch strips. And then on the other side, we have two and a half inch strips. So for this one, we have a total of four strips. Two strips on one side, two strips on the other side. So this all comes from your strip set. Same thing, cut triangle, bottom from the bottom seam, triangle from the top, then from the bottom, and then from the top to get your diagonally pieced squares. Now they look like this. It's pretty, isn't it? You know, you could probably do this quilt with just basic half square triangles where it's just two colors in each square. But there is something about having another couple of colors in the blocks that makes it a scrappy quilt that I think gives it so much interest. That's why we keep using this tube technique with strips. I just love the different colors that are thrown into it. I think it adds a lot more variety. Anyway, side note. Um, so now we have some that look like this and some that look like this. So you can see we're getting close to putting the block together. But you notice we have stems. I debated making those applique stems. And then I decided to go ahead and make them piece stems. So this is how you piece those stems. You will start with a square and then cut it in half diagonally. So here's our square, which we will cut in half diagonally. And then we will place, and this, um, this fabric comes from the strip set. So it's something that you will cut out from the strip sets as soon as you start cutting the strips. You will place this P 
piece in between the two triangles and then square up to make your stem block. That's easy, isn't it? Yeah, presenting it, it's easy. It took me a while to come up with it, <laughs> which is why I considered applique. If you want to make your stems thicker, you can cut wider pieces to start with. You can cut narrower pieces if you want to make your stems. And you, I give you permission, you can applique stems. If you do applique a stem, you could even do it a little curved, not so straight. So now we have a block with half background, a block that's all strips. We have the stem. I think with one more square, we are ready to put our finishing block together. Don't you? Let's see if I can do this. Am I getting there? Well, you don't like that. What's the matter with that? Yeah. So um, happily, I, I'll tell you that we have nice graphics in the pattern that you can follow. <laughs> okay, but I don't like the way that's close to that, and or that to that. So I'm going to move these two around, and then yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, right? Am I right? Am I right now? Took me a little while. Okay, so this is the block, and just sew your blocks together. Um, sew them by rows. These three pieces together to make one row, and then that row, and then that row, and then sew your three rows together. Now, uh, we are using sashing with this quilt. So there is this wonderful sashing fabric that goes in between. The cornerstones also come from your strip set. So when you start to make the pattern, pick out the cornerstones, the fabrics that you like for your cornerstones. Um, border one, we use the same as our background. Border two, very similar to our cornerstones. Notice the pieced border. That is this block. So you will make far more than you need for the leaf blocks. It's that block twisted and turned to create that outer border. And I think this is what makes this quilt so stunning. It's that piece border. And this has been inspired by you guys. You've been holding up quilts when we do sharing. And um, every time somebody comes up with a piece border, there's the oohs and ahs in the crowd. And I thought, well, I want to do that. <laughs> so I did. And then a late addition is this outer border. So we mirror the uh, color of the one, one, two, of the second, one, two, three, four, of the second border for the fourth. You don't have to. Um, when we cut these blocks, these edges are bias edges. So we've added the border both for the aesthetic effect, which I think is fantastic, but also will help stabilize those edges so that when it gets quilted, it looks nice and hangs flat. The reason, if you want to make your own block, that you need odd number blocks is that these squares with the sashing and the borders won't work. They won't be the right number if you use even number blocks. It's a mathematical thing. And I'm telling you my secret right here and now. If you can figure it out, if you don't mind cutting your blocks down or having one block cut off on each side, but for mathematical reasons, the, the block, the number of blocks has to be odd. Yeah, didn't know that, did you? Either did I till I was writing the pattern. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, so this is Leaf It To Me. Beautiful batik fabrics. Um, I might have it in another colorway. Do you want to see it? Please say yes, because I'm dying to show it to you. <laughs> I'm especially dying to show it to you because, can you guess? <laughs> it's my new fabric line.
Do you like it? So this is the table runner. Notice we do not have that outer border on the outside. So um, we're going to stay stitch the edges or put some of that um, protective interfacing on the edges so that it doesn't pull. This new line is called Tonga Romance. It's my fourth collection with Timeless Treasures. And this is the table runner. The bed runner is basically the same except it's longer. The, um, <laughs> the line is called Romance. And I think we should have the tagline because everybody needs some romance. I love it. Right? Do you have any questions on Leaf It to Me? No. All right, this collection will come out in December. Ask for it at your local quilt shop. Ask for it by name. Tonga Romance for Timeless Treasure. And um, may I show you another quilt that has nothing to do with the one behind me? Yes. Since, the, since we have romance here, I'll show you a sneak peek of another quilt. I do, however, need a tall person. Yeah, it, no. <laughs> this, this line is called Hollywood Hills, and it's by Island Boutique. Isn't that a great name? Once I get up there, I'll be taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I live for the little moments when you're not. <laughs> this is a classic, and it's actually, um, here, let me give you this end. Let's see if this works. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's Oh yeah, okay, there we go. Da, da, da. This. It is hanging gardens. So this is a classic pattern. I'm gonna think tall here. This is a classic cozy pattern. It's one of been one of our best sellers. And it is the inspiration for a new book we have coming out called The Best of Cozy. And that Best of Cozy uh, book will have patterns from our best-selling titles. Uh, Hanging Gardens, Butterfly Blooms, Diamond Medley, and a few others. This is once again Tonga Romance. So we just got it, and uh, now we're going to bind it, and then it's going to go off to market and shine at market. I love it. You want to see the back? I'd love to show you the back because of the quilting. Isn't that stunning? <laughs> can you see the quilting? Yeah, you really can now. So the quilting is actually a digitized design done by my mom, Georgette Delarco of Quilter's Niche. She will sell this design. So if you've done Hanging Gardens and you have a computerized quilting system, you can buy this digitized design. We did it on our um, Handy Quilter. Actually, Mona made it on the, the Pro Stitcher on Handy Quilter. So she. She plopped in the, the pieces and then stitched it all out using wool batting, I think. I think that was the plan. For a little extra loft so you could really see the quilting. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I am um, more and more, I am inspired and impressed by the quilting, not just the piecework. And I think this is an excellent example of how quilting can make the quilt. There was an Alex Anderson book way back when. Quilting makes the quilt. It's true. So we'll bind it and it'll be done. There are some quilts that I don't give up. I've always said that if this business ever fails, we'll never be cold. <laughs> All right, your arm's tired yet? Yeah. So what, what, what would you bind it in? Just curious. Decision's already made, so you don't have a say. Brown. This one? Okay, because that's what we're doing, so. <laughs> I accept that as the right answer. Thank you very much. I should make kits with that pattern and fabric. Maybe I will. Mm, all right. Hey. That's great. Okay, my friends, do we have any more questions on Leaf It to Me? You think we're going to do it? Celebrate fall, even though it's 108 degrees today? Good. Um, so, if there's no questions, then... Um, 
why don't we do this again next month? We'll have another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips.